And now we continue with my friend and colleague, uh, Jorge Villa. Villa, uh, see how many people have come. Sorry for the Portuguese. Uh, the, the room is full now. I'm so happy. So a lot were surviving the fight yesterday. So it is a great pleasure for me to introduce a bueno, ya que he great a Doug friend Mallory, of the Carlos. house. Uh, as Carlos presented Doug Mallory, I, I wanted to have the privilege of introducing a great, another great friend of, our, Alejandro of ours, uh, Alejandro Acosta, coordinator of the research and development of LACNIC, and also a member of several organizations who is going to present a some work that is revealing Así the BGP landscape, BGP statistics in our region. So let's receive uh, bueno, Alejandro clapping our hands and we will let Alejandro tell us about his knowledge. Thank you very much, uh, Jorge. Good morning to everybody. I want to tell you I love Thursdays on Lagnox because we speak a lot about BGP. I would like to congratulate the ones that are building the agenda. In this case, I have the privilege of speaking about a project in which we have been working. We, The title was to reveal the BGP landscape and statistics in our region. I hope all of you are ready to listen to these great statistics we have here to show you. First, I would like to ask in this room, who has seen an email like the one we are showing on the screen? Very few hands. Okay. It's great because we will speak a lot about this email. We will have to explain a little bit, but this is the heart of everything we are going to show today. So, what has been going on here? As LACNIC, we wanted to have a kind of a history of BGP information. I said history. When we have a history of the numbers of statistics, we can really see the growth, see if we are doing things right, if we have to adjust anything on the way. And if we take a, a picture of today, we see statistics from today. And that doesn't tell us much. But thanks to the other uh, speakers, uh, uh, we have some help, like though he was speaking about uh, earlier cases, so we can see if everything is working. And here we are going to talk about the announcements. So how do we reach this uh, objective of getting the history? We rescue thanks to LACNOG, and so there is no better place than this to do this. So we go to the the data that LACNOG has been collecting to prepare this work. I want to make a small break. Do you know what DFZ is, default free zone? Uh, I would like to stop here because I will mention it later. Later, it's known as full routing when we make a connection with another provider. Do you have full routing? Uh, it's, uh, are you going to announce all prefixes of all autonomous systems of all the planet? All the charts we get, they are based on the routers having DFC. For the ones that are a little more curious, uh, we have here the technical information, how we did this on our database. All the database we got was from uh, LACNOG's list. Uh, so we took each of the web pages of LACNOG, look for the email I was mentioning. We take the, the different data and we use Python 3 uh, with a beautiful so, uh, beautiful soup. Uh, it's a great uh, library for doing this. And then we use Google Charts uh, through the API. Before I continue, I would like to thank Philip Smith. Maybe you know him. He is from Asia. The email I was showing, uh, he's the one responsible 
uh, to build it and send it. And he has been doing a great job. I will uh, briefly check this email. It's the same I was showing before. We will read two of the uh, data. The email is quite long. We just took a picture of the LACNIC area. And we see on the first line, prefixes being announced by LACNIC region autonomous systems. It's a very nice line that we were able to do the history from 2017 to today. So there is some segregation. And in LACNIC, we have 4.16 deaggregation factor. Uh, we were able to take a picture on the history, and we will see how this has been evolving. We will see that there are many other informations that are important. This is coming every Friday to our Lagnog list. Why do we do it since 2017? Because in 2017, this started coming regularly. Maybe we can get an email that is uh, older than this, but if we make a chart, it won't get. we won't get a nice chart. Uh, so let's see the results. I believe that's what people want to see. So we have uh, six uh, pages with two results per page. In the first chart we have on the top, we have the prefixes that are announced by uh, LACNIC autonomous systems. And we see that it started a little above uh, 80,000. And for September 23rd of this year, we are announcing 118,492 prefixes. So we can see the growth. That's what we are looking for, the growth in the deployment in Latin America. And we can see uh, the internet deployment is increasing. In the lower chart, we have how many autonomous systems in the whole BGP chart table uh, in the or, uh, origin AS. Those are autonomous systems from our region, 11,035 in 2023. It started with slightly higher than 6,000. And in the last years, we had uh, uh, a growth of about 5,000 autonomous systems that have been added, added to the region. Autonomous systems that are announcing only one prefix in our region. This is a little more difficult to say if it's good or wrong, but we see some growth as well. Uh, we have in September 2023, 2,686 autonomous systems in our region that do transit. They are, they are not an origin autonomous system, but they provide traffic, traffic or transit to this uh, other uh, AS. So we had growth. We started in 1,000 and a little bit, and now it's 2,331 in September. Now we go, I like this, this uh, factor very much. The number of IP addresses announced from LACNIC. Uh, addresses uh, assigned by LACNIC, how many we see on the internet? One, 178 million, 424,320. That's a very interesting number. We should pay attention to that in the next years to see if this is growing or decreasing, and we can take actions to correct it in, on the way. Then re, uh, regarding prefixes, this is an average number. How many uh, prefixes LACNIC is announcing as an average? We have 10.64. It's just an average. Here we have the same information in two charts that I would like to explain a little better. The deaggregation factor for LACNIC for all prefixes. This is a typical case that uh, the lower the number is in the chart, the best it will be for everybody. So naturally, it, it's very, it's a little uh, difficult to explain, but I come to the numbers. If we are an ISP, we have 100 prefixes. 150, the number you prefer. What happens? If I have 100 and my deaggregation factor is 4, it means that I am announcing 400 prefixes on the internet. Traditionally, that's bad because we are using memory resources, CPU from other resources. But it's good that it has been dropping with time. If we compare with other regions, 
at least in the last uh, on the last line of the chart the lower chart the one we see in orange color is 2.12 it is overlapping arin and ripe it's the, the aggregation factor is 2.12 why do they do it why don't we do it we can uh, sit here and make a panel about this but I assume that sometimes it has to do with traffic engineering, but you should take into account that usually this value is negative. So if possible, we don't deaggregate. How many autonomous systems uh, you see in the routing table? Uh, you see 8,855. How many numbers are announced? that are uh, blocks that are assigned by LACNIC. We have uh, 100, and the lower chart we have one, as well, this has been growing in the last uh, years with the growth of internet in the region. Here we have two charts. The first one is very important. The second one is not so much. It's like mixing everything. Uh, it, the first one has to do with the average path length in the AS path. How you see them in the internet. Of course, this will change depending on the perspective on the part of the world uh, you are in. But now for this stat, we believe that the average of the length of the AS path is uh, uh, 25. The rest is historic and uh, uh, no, it's it's five, and the rest is historic. That's why I said that it's miscellaneous. For as of September 23rd, some of us was announcing a prefix with 55 ASs in the way. This is a fun fact. Where do you think that the AS with more prefix announced is in the world? Yes, this is correct in our region. That was Brazil. Does anybody want to say some other who dares? So that is that you downloaded it. Yes, uh, you'd read it before. It's Mexico. Oh, somebody's complaining here. It's interesting. So, so here, although. Here you have who does it. So uh, you don't have to do that uh, task of uh, knowing who is the guilty, guilty one. So bad news, maybe the word is not a bad, but news, but sad. All the statistics that I just showed are of IPv4. We don't have this report available for IPv6. I already have some info. To, for people that I'm trying to see to see whether we can do something about this to gradually connect this information of IPv6 so that in uh, three or five times a year we can do that. So that's all I have. Questions? Sí, eh, gracias, Leandro. Tenemos yes, Leandro, Alejandro. Por acá con una yes, here we have a question. Yes, I'm a bit Guatemala. Could you go back to the first chart, please? This is not a question, but rather a comment. That we can see that this is not just fun fact, but it can give us some intelligence of what's happening with LACNIC. From 2021 on, there are almost no transfers. Of course, there are transfers of prefixes, inbound and outbound, but they have not affected the number of prefixes that are being announced, almost. That's an excellent uh, comment. I really thank you for that comment. If, yes, we if we used a magnifying glass for all the charts, you see that well, this dropped. Of course, it is co it coincided with uh, our depletion of addresses, and LACNIC was announcing the size of the prefix that any body requesting um, prefixes would get. Then, for many years, we wouldn't give more than slash twenty two. So. Um, as you know, uh, this was the 
the policy changed. Only new members, those that could request. And uh, so now we have a waiting list that is several for, of several years. So some uh, people have to wait for seven years until they get the, the prefix. Uh, maybe that behavior is because of that. But that's the good thing about having the history. Well, yes. Personally, I thank you for these charts. And I think that we should think as a LACNIC project to draw more intelligence from those. Thank you. Yes, bueno, I'll take that as homework. We have two questions here in the room, and we would close for the next presentation. You have one minute. I'm uh, Modeleski. Uh, uh, thank you for the presentation. At present, at Nano, there's a discussion as to whether we should disaggregate more than slash 24, the IPv4s. When do you think that the discussion will come to the region? Well, I've followed that discussion. Thank you for bringing it uh, to the table. I think that we won't see that. If you ask me, I, I would say I don't agree. I think that we should focus more on IPv6 than thinking if we can um, uh, think of smaller uh, networks, uh, slash 24, uh, as they do in Nano. I think that um, we should uh, increase IPv6. Alejandro, in the disaggregation that you say 4.16, uh, the deaggregation of LACNIC and 2.12 is the deaggregation of RIPE. So RIPE has many more resources than LACNIC, I imagine. To what extent that does that have an impact in the global routing? Today, now we have a solution of routers. Maybe it would be good to see how much of that 4.16, what is the impact in the routes vis-a-vis uh, maybe the number of IPs or the routes is different. I don't think that it has such an impact personally. I'm running out of time, but why don't I think that it has such an impact? Because this goes beyond. How do you calculate this? It's very easy. You take the size of the prefixes you're announcing and you compare it with, compare it against the autonomous system of origin. Then you do the supernetting. You you start turning off routes uh, from the, the left to the right to the left. And it's so that topic is so nice that I think that we can put it in the next uh, panel. It doesn't have to do so much with uh, the amount of resources, but with the traffic engineering that an ISP should have, for instance, a slash 22, then you have two uh, uh, option providers, uh, the, the prefix is announced by one, and then you start with the deaggregation. And so you have the announcement through other. I think that the issues are, um, it's. It's it's more a matter of traffic engineering, but maybe next time bueno, I agree that we pues could do something about that. Well, it's been an excellent presentation. Let's give an applause for Alejandro. Applause for Alejandro.